You and me stuck on the ocean now Nothing but waves and they're spilling in I wanna dry up but too Just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here All my reasoning have disappeared I wanna bury the hatchet And find the way back to our home Our home, our home We don't have to drift inside this dome I will not let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we get <clears throat> Hey guys, there's Lowe's Outdoors Fishing I'm doing a little intro because I didn't do intro when I went out fishing on a boat Yes, on a boat Most of y'all gonna say, what, on a boat? Yeah so I get a phone call probably about 8 o'clock in the morning. A buddy of mine that he is local in Sarasota, he does fishing charters. And he calls me early in the morning and says, hey man, let's go fishing, blah, blah, blah. So I say, yeah. You know, oh, another thing, if you guys are on vacation or you guys are local in Sarasota, I'm going to leak all his information down in the description down below. Tell him that I send you or just tell him that you looked at my video and uh yeah he put me on some good fish you know i'm definitely gonna do it again i'm definitely gonna give him a call and we're definitely gonna go fishing again i'm telling you you will learn so many new things from him he will teach you if you don't know how to fish he will teach you how to fish if you don't know the name of the fish he will tell you the name of the fish he will tell you any knots any knots how to tie them and how to call them or whatever he will tell you everything about fishing if you don't know he's a very nice dude i recommend people going fishing with him and guys just give me a subscribe thumbs up for appreciation and don't forget to like the video if you want me to do more catch cleaning cook videos and give me a comment down below what type of fish you would like to see you know if you guys want to see me catch mullet, do a catch clean cook. You guys want to see me do a jack video, catch clean cook, um, mangrove snappers again. Just just comment down below. And if you're a new subscriber, thanks for subscribing and thanks for the positive comments and not negative comments. But guys, y'all will like the video. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> well. The day before that, we, me and Joe did not do good. But Joe couldn't go because he was working, and that's that's how it is, guys. So, guys, if you'd like to book a trip with him, his name is Trey. I'll link all his information down in the description. And, guys, all right, we're going with the video. Let's talk. All right. Oh. I can't believe we didn't get caught off. A macro, bro. Dang. Never caught a macro that big. Yep. No. Dang. That was the biggest macro I caught. Yeah. yeah. You want it, you can keep it. Alright. I'll show you a trick. But we gotta get ice, actually. You told me I would have bought some. We, we, we're going to go back this way anyway, so, Damn, bro. so check this out. Uh -huh. What I'll do, uh, let me eat some back here. So I'll take it. Got it? In here, you know how to bleed a fish? No, not really. No. So come in here. You got it on video? Yeah. Here. Here. So. Yeah. So the way I like to bleed a fish, come in here instead of cutting their throat you know mm -hmm. you can just take a finger and inside of there there's like a little I'm trying to spread it open so you can see there that little film right there back behind the gills yeah all you're gonna do is just stick your finger into that so, kind of tricky sometimes you don't so you don't have to cut the gill exactly but you can stick a finger up in there now look at all the blood that's gonna start coming out mm -hmm. that'll that'll disable that fish real fast or dispatch that fish real fast but look at all that blood what that does is it increases you got that bloodline once we once we fillet it mm -hmm. i'll show you what i mean later but once you fillet that fish 
that bloodline that runs up in here, kind of laterally, it starts probably about here and runs back, it'll make that a lot less darker. It takes a lot of that blood out of there. So I'll just put it in there, drip it around a little bit, get some of that blood out. See all that? That's real thick, like red, red blood. So that just makes you that don't want meat. to eat all that. No. no that dark meat is fishy. Good stuff, so. Yeah, so watch your foot there. I'll put them in the fish box. First fish of the day. Put your foot next to that thing, man. That ain't probably bigger than your foot, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Jack. Yeah, I see it, yeah. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, is it open? I'm trying to catch a big one. Can you grab him? There's two little black things on our needle. Uh huh. Just grab there and there. So kind of paralyze it for a minute. That's why I like circle hooks though. Right in the corner of Oh, yeah. Every time I grab. So you're chumming the water. Chumming it up. Now, ideally, what I'm looking for. Sometimes it doesn't happen instantly. It takes a minute or two sometimes. Do you throw them in there? I've just seen one get busted over there. Yep. So I'm just waiting for the snook to just go. It sounds cool. It's like a, it sounds like a pop. Like you're cuffing your hand and smacking the top of the water. It's like pop, pop, pop. So I'll throw a couple in there alive. Let them swim around. And then I'll take some in here for this redfish. Redfish is snook. Uh huh. line two lines it's called a bimini twist mm -hmm. comes down and then i tie an albright knot straight to this leader it's just a 20 pound and it's nothing special it's not an expensive leader mm -hmm. literally i just buy the cheapest monofilament spool of line i can find and how big and i usually do about five and a half six feet okay it's not going to hurt you to have too much yeah i mean take that with a grain of salt I wouldn't put like 30 feet of it on there, <laughs> but six feet of it is pretty good. That way, if you have to retie and cut off and retie like five or six times, mm -hmm. you know, some people only tie like a, hold that hook for me, buddy. Some people only tie like a three foot leader on there. You retie and cut off three times, you've already down to like a two foot leader. Yep. So, but I start off, I take it, the Albright knot, super easy to tie, super fast. You can let go of that in there. Oh. Tell me where I'm good in your shot. Are you? So I take Albright. Albright knots what I'm gonna be tying. I take the uh, the leader material mm -hmm. and I'll just make make a loop with it. Right? And then I take my, my main line, come from my reel, go underneath, and I pinch. And I like the number seven, so I go seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When it gets to the bottom. I'll pinch down there and I'll go back seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now the most important part is right here. See how that line comes in from the bottom? Mm -hmm. Make sure I go right back in from the top. So when you get done, 
they should come in and go out in the same way. Wet it with a little bit of spit, pull all four tight at the same time, and then once it gets snug, you can let go and just pull the two main lines. And trim your tag end as close as you can get them. The reason I like that not so much, dude, it's very, yeah, very they're going profile. Up, right? It's very profile, very strong. Mm. So when you go to cast, it's not like, you know how some knots you have where it's like, you cast it's like, clunk, 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 yeah. clunk, clunk, or yeah. you'll throw your bait off because it wasn't, you know, it didn't go through the eyes easy enough. Well, I have done that before. So I do, I like that knot for that reason. And then it's, as far as like a regular knot going onto the hook, mm. uh, I don't even know what you would call this. It's kind of like a twist, like my version of like an improved clinch knot or a, a fisherman's knot or whatever it's called. So I go through the eye of the hook, then I go one, two, three times. I go through that bottom. You can see through that hole, you know. Go through that bottom one. And then sometimes people only go through here once. But this is the only thing different that I do. I go through there twice. Twice, I see I go once. But the reason I do that is it's a super small. Oh crap. Super small but super strong knot. Hmm. So I don't like I like the least amount of anything on my lines as possible. Hmm. Sometimes you see like knots that are like real big and bulky and it like Yeah. I don't know, it just doesn't maybe it's just a personal preference, but <laughs> that knot right there I've caught thousands and thousands and thousands of fish on and I would say maybe maybe like one out of a hundred of those will slip and it's not even because of the not slipping it's because I didn't tie it right or because something? I didn't yeah sometimes I may think I went through it twice but I only went through it once and you hook your your bait through the nose right yeah right through that little clear spot and if you do it right it'll go pop just yep. like you did it perfect there you go. The reason I like doing that is because when you cast it out, let's say it's not in a spot you like it or something, mm -hmm. you can reel it back in and it's streamlined. It's not twisting up. And yep. it'll live the longest that way. Now, if you hook it through the tail, what would it do? Because I hook it sometimes through the tail. Yeah, if you hook it through the tail, it, it definitely presents it in a different way. So I'll, I'll tail hook it mm -hmm. if I want it to swim downward. Oh, okay. Typically, like when you do that, it'll swim downward. So like if you took a pinfish, mm -hmm. naturally they're going to go to the bottom regardless. Yeah. But let's say they're swimming away from you, right? Okay. You can make that, that, that pinfish will kind of swim downward. And that's just because if, if you're holding tension and he's swimming away, he's going to be pulled face down. Oh, okay, okay. Rather than being uh, hooked from the nose. And pulled. But the thing, like I said though, is the good thing about hooking them through anything through the nose. Uh-huh. Is it's streamlined, so it's gonna come any back bait? to you. Yeah, or just any, any fish. Any, okay. So if you hook it from the nose and you reel it back in because uh -huh. you need to re-throw it or something. Uh, like for instance, right here, our bait just kind of did our own their own thing. So I'm reeling mine back up. Oh, I just had a dude a mackerel. That yeah, came I saw up it. We were tangled up there. Yep. Hey. A mackerel came up and ate your bait though. I saw it. <laughs> so that's one reason why. There you go, that's a prime example, dude. Yep, nice and simple. Which, that cool, they kind of, they'll just do like a stinking bite. So they just see something shiny and they go for it. Hmm. But, another thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't twist your line up when you're reeling it in. So like if you had it tail hooked and you reeled it in, and you get back and you hold your bite up in, bait up in the air and just let it spin, You'll, you'll see your line just spun up about a hundred times. Damn. And you don't want that. No. That's what creates knots. And that's no bueno. No bueno. You going? Yep. Oh, I'm going to tighten your guy just a little bit. Now go low with your rod left. Pull back to the right. Maybe you're good there. Trying to get you in the mangroves and break it off. <laughs> yeah, pull left. Oh, pull to the right side. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh. Give it a second, you might. 
give it, just don't, uh, don't give it slack, but just drop your rocket a little bit. See if you feel him move. I think he's got you in those mangroves bad. No, I feel him moving. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Wait it out a minute to see what happens. So keep, keep, keep my piece of tension on him there. If he moves to a point where you can get him out of there, you got to be ready. Dang. I felt that thing hit hard. Yeah, I don't mean to like be all up in your grill about messing with your rod. But no, 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 no. You gotta be, uh, like I said, it's always about learning, learning something new. Okay, there you go. Yeah, buddy, get him out of there. Sure. I just you feel it moving. Yeah, I feel it move. This, uh, coming this way. He's there. I feel him. Try, uh, because sometimes what they're going to do is just sit there and spin and wrap themselves up. So I don't want that to happen because uh -huh. you could kill him that way All right. if he gets tangled on there. So just grab kind of tight and don't pull back, like don't yank it, but just kind of keep some steady tension and pull back slowly to see if he, see if he comes off. Oh, the same? Just keep, keep repeating what I just okay. had to do. There you go. Pull, 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 pull. He's right there in the main room. He's coming out now. You got him? Yep. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> He's right here. Do I need a net or can I land it by hand? Uh, let's see. No, I, don't, I don't see him. Where is he at? Where is he at? Where is he at? Oh, I see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. There you go, dude. Nice swing. <laughs> oh, snap. Nice, man. Circle hooks always work the best. Hey, hold on, I gotta get you to hold a fish good. Put a hand underneath the belly. No, that, like right here. Right there, perfect. I'm gonna get a good shot in the uh, I don't know. Oh, look what I caught. Oh, snapping. Mangrove. Not a keeper, though. Pretty, man. I like their eyes. Yeah. Get I caught, I caught. That pier, right? Yeah. I caught one so red the other day. It was a mangrove, but he was so red. Nice little mango. Fish on. Is it? Yeah, I see it. Oh no! Oh god. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. Another jack. Man, I love circle hooks. <laughs> oh, Jack. Oh, yeah. Nice Jack. There you go. <laughs> Another Jack. Another Jack. You're beginning them Jacks. What's going on? I don't know, man. It's probably Jack day for you. I can't catch Jack. <laughs> I said that too much and now I'm Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now he's coming back. Oh, 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 oh. You got one? I 
Had a bite. Yep, hey, fish on. Double. double up. That's like a snapper though. Oh, that's a little jack. Oh, yeah, you got a little baby jack. Yep. Dang. Never seen a baby jack like that. That thing is cool looking though, isn't it? Yeah. See the color on it? Oh, look at the size of this one. It's probably his dad. <laughs> oh, look at there's another one right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, you just ate that bait. It came off the uh, line. Well, that's a good giant. Look at this baby one. <laughs> right. We'll get a picture of them both. That's okay. Calm down. Nice. <laughs> Yours is small enough to get ate by mine. Yeah. All right. Fighters, bro. <laughs> All right, we're moving spots. We're moving to a different spot. We fished there for a couple, couple good seconds, minutes, or whatever you want to call it. So we're trying a different spot. Kayaking. Yeah, they do those kayak cords right there. Oh, yeah? See if we can flip them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, like it's the first time they've been on the water. Look, right here. <laughs> Look. Usually all down that side there. So now we just gotta figure out where that is. Yes. No bueno, my friend. Just seen a little cheap head. Right there. Right here looks like a good spot. It's just kind of stagnant right here. We'll cruise up along this mangrove line right here. Yeah. 
expected to see in like 15 or 20 snow. There. Bum skis. Look. Fish on. Is it? Nice. What do you say? No, you're good. Beep, beep. <laughs> I heard him say something. I may not be the biggest guy, but I got a set of balls on me. Oh. When they say stuff like that, I mean, like, not, I mean, that in like the term of like, you and me stuck on the ocean now Nothing but waves in this filling in I wanna dry up but you Just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here All my reasoning have disappeared I wanna bury the hatchet And find the way back to our home Our home, our home We don't have to drift inside this dome I will not let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we can break free We can still go back there To a place with no cares We can turn this ship around We can turn this ship around All the way back home Ourselves. Didn't have much, but nevertheless We were true to each other But now we don't even bother I remember you being hopeful But the tall waves have worn us down And slowly we are drowning That's why you need to come with me With me, with me Turn around 180 degrees And cross the sea I will not let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we can break free We can still go back there To a place with no cares We can turn this ship around we Okay Alright, so I'm making a decision behind this, uh, I guess you'd call that a pectoral fin, but even though it's more on the side. Just make a little incision just like that. Turn the blade, run it down all the way to the end of the tail, like that, pop it right out. That's your fillet, there's one. Now there's still bones in it, I'll show you how to get those out in a second. Same thing on this side, incision, curve that knife real hard, follow that backbone. Sometimes you get a little issue there. I'm just running along the spine or mm -hmm. backbone or whatever. There you go. Well, you've been we... eating a bunch of uh, sardines. Oh, yeah. And whenever we fillet it, I mean, uh, bleed it out? We bled it, yeah. So already, you can already see how nice and white that meat is. You can still see that bloodline going down the center, which you're going to end up having to cut most of it out anyways, because from here to here, there's lateral bones. Mm. So... You end up having to cut those out anyhow, but bleeding it definitely takes a lot more of that blood out. So I take the knife at a really sharp angle, just like that, and that cuts out all those rib bones. You don't need to cut straight down because you miss all that meat, but I always just take that at a really nice sharp angle. And then feel right here, feel all these bones? All the way down. They go all the way down to about midway. 
So I just make a really small cut down one side, press down real hard, push one side out, same thing on this side. Then you got that, cut down each side. Now there's a good representation of that bloodline. You can see that. Now had I not bled that, that would come up even higher and be much richer, much more uh, red. But if you go like this, kind of seeing that sun, you can see where it'll naturally lay in the middle of that fish. Mm. But that right there is a perfect fillet. That's how you perfect. end up with a mackerel. And then I usually leave the skin on it. Uh -huh. And what that does is, uh, once you, because if I try to take that off now, you're gonna end up losing a lot of meat because of meat, that, yeah. that skin tears so easily. You know what I'm saying? So if you leave it on there and then you just, I like to, to blacken these, mm -hmm. you just cook it up. As soon as it gets cooked up, this skin will peel off. Like you just grab it with your fingers and it'll peel right off. So here, we'll watch it one more time. I'll get in the sunlight a little bit better. So come down at a pretty hard angle. Just slip right underneath those rib cage. So there's that. Put that thing around there. Go back, go down about midway. There's one side of the lateral bones and that bloodline. There's the other side. Slip that little piece off, feed the pelicans down there. <laughs> and that is how you clean a mackerel. Nice filet. Boom, baby. And lunch is ready. Be grilling that later. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the snook's still there too. Go, bro. All right.